Even the sky constantly cries for your tragic loss. You are definitely going to heaven. You are still in my thoughts. Rest in peace, Kate. This breaks my heart. I met Kate when we were working on the boats during the oil spill. Anyone she was who always loved sweet Kate, and had a smile that would friends, light up the room. New ones, who have any pictures, heartfelt condolences from all the Scottish McVeighs. Kate, you were such Kate's a warm, friendly face friends, at both PDS and Miami. Passenger. So sorry to hear about this tragic loss. Keeping your loved ones in my thoughts and prayers. see it on a continuum of happy to sad at all. I mean, um, mostly I, I just think it's, it is not, I'd say, I'd say it's better. It's a good thing. Better than a sad thing, you know. Whereas going to the cemetery, that seems really sad to me. <laughs> but, but the Facebook, it's like, oh, hi, Sandy. You know, it just looks like she did, you know, last time I saw her. I'm Kathy Detzer, and Sandy was a very good friend of mine who died about uh, three years ago, a little more than three years ago. Um, we used to walk together. She's a good friend. Have you been to her grave? No, mm -mm, not since she was buried. There it is. But it's um, it's no, it's kind of bittersweet. It actually, I mean, it's I like the picture. I took the picture of that we posted. So in some ways, it's kind of comforting and nice. I kind of like it. it it's um, it's a little sad because I do miss her, but um, it doesn't seem maudlin or anything like that. You know, your memories of somebody is what keeps them alive in your heart, in your head, and. Um, Facebook keeps that a little bit more contemporary. And um, you're looking at a headstone, it's like, they're nowhere anywhere near here. <laughs> you know, they don't, doesn't, there's no picture or anything, so. There she is. If I go to her photos, they're still there. Yeah, she loved this picture. She played guitar, and so she would sing to her nieces and stuff. Isn't that sweet? I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to relate to for me. This doesn't have a lot of the cemetery piece. Doesn't feel as connecting as the Facebook piece. Um, I feel like when I see her, it's so great to see her little face smiling back at me. You know, I really like that. Um, I remember when I did write this post. It's been a while now, but when I wrote it, it made me feel like. I was actually talking to her, like, sure miss you. It was like, you know, there's never an opportunity. I never feel like I'm within range of her hearing. So, but looking at the Facebook page, it kind of felt like that. It kind of felt like that. I guess like if you were going to visit a grave, you yeah. know. Um, when Lakeview Cemetery was first designed, it was designed as a park, and people came here to picnic um, before a lot of burials had taken place. There was a lot of land that was open, and um, there was a time when, when um, cemeteries were thought of as a place to gather as a family and both, you know, remember somebody, have a picnic maybe. Um, and the, the view of cemeteries has changed over the years, and some of that has been cultural, some of it has been due to um, illnesses that have come through our communities, um, and you know, wanting to be near the dead, wanting the dead way far away from where people live because people would be afraid of you know, um, illness that they might catch somehow. So it, it, has, uh, it has definitely varied, um, but I think that um, as far as right now goes, the people I talk to 
really, really still feel strongly about wanting to have a place where they can come to remember their people who died. So you go from an analog age where we all come together at the funeral and the memorial service, we share experiences, maybe we're lucky enough to have five or six or seven pictures of that person to tell their story, to a memorial that never stops. It goes on forever. But that that's where we're at. We're at a stage where so much of our lives are being played out in the social tools in the space that when we pass away, there's a part of us that's left behind in a way that never was there before. It, it's more than a footprint. We're just creating content, creating content, and just putting it out in these digital uh, places, and then one day we're gone, but that stuff is still there. Yeah, I've never like written or blogged or anything. And then after he died, it, my dad died, it was like probably a month later, I just started writing down what happened the day he died. And because I never really processed it, I just, it was just kind of a day that happened. And then I had my friend Erin, she looked at it and she's like, you should post this. And so then I was like, okay. So then that's kind of just how it started. He like wasn't Buddhist, but he likes to think he was Buddhist. But really, he just likes the idea of like a fat, happy, bald guy like somewhere in the universe, because that's what he was. When I when things happen or like trigger a memory, I'll write about it. But yeah, I never went to like support groups or anything or anything like that. Well, because he was sick for like 14 years before he died, so it, there was never like. Most of the grieving happened before, so now this is just like reflecting on it, kind of. But yeah, like every time I post or something, like I'll find a picture of us or a picture of him and like that's the picture I attach to it. So I guess that's kind of a way of keeping it there. And we took our last selfie, that's actually up there. And that when he's in the green, do you see it? Yeah, that was like our last selfie. So like, I love that picture, even though it's a horrible picture of me, but I don't know, that's like our last picture together. So that's kind of cool. The majority of his ashes, we started a family stone in Rockport. Um, and it's really cool. Cause like we have like this Japanese maple with this like Buddha statue underneath and like succulent. It's not like the typical like grave, I guess. Every time I'm home, I'll like stop at the cemetery and go sit with him. And there's this guy, Richard, that's buried next to him. I have no idea who Richard is, but I was like leaning against his grave to like face my dad. It's like, whatever. Um, so like, I'll go visit him and stuff, but like, I really don't think he's there, I guess, you know? Like, he's off doing something awesome. And so when I'm there, it's kind of like, I go not, I mean, maybe just I feel obligated to go and visit, because I feel like he would if it was me. I never really feel him when I'm at the grave. It's just kind of like I'm there. <laughs>